we are back. I am Richard R.J. Eskow, and this is The Zero Hour. This week, we learned that conceptual artists struck the television program Homeland. As reported in the New York Times uh, in a recent episode of the show, which I watched last night, by the way, the former CIA officer, Kerry Matheson, is escorted through a uh, fictional refugee camp, Syrian refugee camp, and there is some graffiti in Arabic on the wall. Now, unbeknownst to them, they hired some uh, uh, politically minded artists to do the graffiti spray painting. And among the things that they wrote in Arabic were the phrases, homeland is racist, there is no homeland, and homeland is not a show. Uh, now, the artists, uh, one an Egyptian, Hiba Y. Amin, and two other artists, took credit for the graffiti and said, according to the New York Times, it was a subtle protest, protest of false and misleading stereotypes in the series itself. And the artist said in a statement, quote, the series has garnered the reputation of being the most bigoted show on television for its inaccurate, undifferentiated, and highly biased depiction of Arabs, Pakistanis, and Afghans, as well as its gross misrepresentations of the cities of Beirut and Islamabad and the so-called Muslim world in general. Now, to their credit, uh, one of the co-creators of Homeland said in response, we wish we'd caught these images before they made it to air. However, as Homeland always tries to be subversive, dot, 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 we can't help but admire this act of artistic sabotage. Good response. But I will say this. The artists are absolutely correct. I have a very strong set of mixed feelings about Homeland. I enjoy watching it. I have a friend who was a regular on the show. He isn't this season. But uh, so I have good feelings in many ways about the show, although I think it's gone off the rails as a program a couple times. I do enjoy watching it. However, it is clearly stereotyping Muslims in many ways, and it does stereotype Muslim cities like Islamabad, which have very, uh, and, and the markets in Beirut and so on, uh, an American w woman would not need to cover herself if she didn't want to, uh, because these are very uh, cosmopolitan places that are being treated as primitive and savage and scary. I even noticed in the episode last night that every time the hero, the heroine moves into a crowd of Muslims foreboding music plays. Now, this is not good stuff. In addition, the guy who's kind of the conscience of the series, his name is Peter. In the first episode of this season, he's given a chance to give his big speech. What would he do if he wanted to clean up the Middle East? And his answer is he would bomb the city of Raqqa, which is where ISIS is headquartered, into the ground and send in 200,000 American troops and 200,000 teachers and social workers and so on. This is based on a gross misunderstanding of what needs to be done there. Bombing Raqqa into, the, uh, into rubble would in fact strengthen ISIS. That's a kind of misunderstanding we need to get beyond. So the show occasionally does step into political polemic, and when it does so, its message is terrible. It also uses a lot of subliminal messaging to say negative things about uh, about the Muslim world uh, that really it ought to stay away from. So I applaud these artists, although I do congratulate the program's producers for having such a, you know, kind of cool response to it. But yes, we do need to be bringing attention to these flaws in programs like Homeland. Now, closer to home in terms of democracy, there's been quite a dust up because we learn that uh, Democratic Representative Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii was disinvited from this week's debate because she objected to Debbie Wasserman Schultz's uh, limiting of the debates to uh, such a sh small number, which many people interpreted as being uh, uh, an act of support for Hillary Clinton, who presumably is the front runner, wants as few debates as possible to avoid the possibility of gaffes and so on. Now, in return, she was punished in a very tyrannical way by Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, that it turned even the very uh, peacemaking and alliance building R.T. Ryback, former, <clears throat> former mayor of Minneapolis and another member of the uh, DNC's governing group to object publicly. So the DNC, which is the representative body of the Democratic Party, which by its very name aspires to be democratic, is aspiring, is, is, is breaking out in controversy against its leadership, claiming it's not 
democratic enough. A little irony this week. And with that, we will close. I am Richard R.J. Escal. This is The Zero Hour.